What's going on everyone? Kyle here to bring you a thorough in-depth road test of the Fiat Abarth 595. For those of you who have been following across social media and especially Instagram, I've been traveling along with the Gumball 3000 rally this year. Being that I didn't take my own car with me, Abarth kindly provided us a vehicle for the USA run, but for the European run, we were lucky enough to snag this 50th anniversario 595. So today we're about an hour and a half outside of London at Dunsfold Park. So for those of you familiar with Top Gear, is the location of the Top Gear test track. So while I have previously covered some USA spec Abarth models in the past, I'm going to be focusing more on the differences of the European version, what makes the 595 different from the standard Abarth, especially the 50th anniversario. Now we're going to do something super special today, something that I've never personally had the opportunity to do. We're going to take this 595 down the runway for a thorough road test with tons of acceleration, cornering, and more. It's going to be really cool. Stuff that I've been wanting to do for this channel since, since the beginning, but now we finally have the opportunity to do it on a super cool car. It may not be a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, but man, this thing is fun. And so, without further ado, Let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now this 595 features a pearl white matte finish exterior with full leather upholstery of a combination of white and red with red accenting found throughout, including matte finish on the dash. Beautiful sound from that signature quad exhaust. The 595 features Fiat's dual drive electric assist speed proportional rack and pinion power steering setup, fed through an Abarth specific heavy bolstered flat bottom race inspired steering wheel. The 50th Anniversario features special perforated leather up top, red color accent stitching down below, as well as more specific stitching towards the crest of the wheel, not to mention a Jaeger design speedometer cluster and turbo boost gauge to the left. The steering feels very light, yet communicates good feel overall in my opinion. Activating sport mode, aside from raising the peak torque and increasing throttle response, also increases the steering weight. It's pretty easy to toss around at lower speeds while having increased response based on your input at higher speeds for more precise maneuvers. While it may not be quite as razor sharp as some other things that I've driven in the segment, it doesn't mean for a second that this isn't extremely fun to drive. I also think it has a pretty tight turning radius as well, helping with its small car proportions, making it a lot easier to move around especially in crowded areas. Now the 595 50th Anniversario comes standard with one transmission, no manual option is available. Instead it features Abarth's Competizione 5 speed automated manual transmission. It has both automated as well as full manual capabilities activated via the push buttons in the center console. To activate, just put your foot on the brake and hit the desired selection. To put it into gear, just hit the 1 on top and use the A M button to switch between automatic and manual modes, shifting via the aluminum paddle shifters mounted on the back of the steering wheel. Because this gearbox is not available in the United States, I was really excited to try it out once we picked up the car in Scotland. It takes a bit to get used to and while fun in a way can be a bit aggravating. 
At speeds, shifts are smooth, quick, and are accompanied by an exhaust pop that sounds super cool, but at low speeds, the car does lag a good bit when coming off a standstill. Now, I don't know if that's a combination of the transmission and turbo lag or not, but especially in traffic, you press the accelerator and feel you need to press it further to get going, but at that moment, the car lurches forward with power. In other words, in first gear, I don't think the power delivery is really proportional to the pedal input, so it takes a little bit to get used to. Now I do love a good manual, and we did have a manually equipped Abarth 500 on the US side, but I did enjoy this gearbox a lot for the European run. It gave the feeling of a manual without having to change gears, and especially in an unfamiliar area, we really appreciated that. While different, I don't think it took away from the enjoyment of the car at all. And so, we're going to flip on the Xenon projector headlamps, hazards, and front and rear fog lamps. The windows are automatic. And we'll check out the exterior. The latest generation Fiat 500 only recently appeared stateside a couple of years ago, but has been sold in Europe since the model's revitalization back in 2007. With that was the rebirth of the famous in-house tuning company, Abarth. In the US, Abarth models are simply referred to as an extension of the Fiat 500 lineup. Coming with a standard high output engine, manual transmission, or the recently introduced 6-speed automatic and your typical customization options. However, overseas, Abarth is recognized as its own company and brand, not labeled under its parent company. Therefore, they're not referred to as Fiat's, but simply Abarth's. The biggest difference between the US and European markets are the amount of models available. The standard spec Abarth 500 in the States is not the same as the Euro spec entry level Abarth. While ours features 160 horsepower from its turbocharged 1.4 liter multi air four cylinder, the Euro version begins between 135 and 140 horsepower depending on your gearbox. For higher output variants, you would step it on up to the 595, which boasts more power, suspension tuning, upgraded brakes, and more. The current 595 Turismo and Competizione both produce 160 horsepower, but differ in their equipment as the Competizione is more of a race inspired variant. The 595 50th Anniversario is designed to honor the original 595, which first debuted in September of 1963. Of course, Abarth and Fiat in general are not strangers to special editions. Some even may remember the highly tuned limited edition Tributo Ferrari and Edizioni Maserati Abarth 695s released in 2009 and 2012 respectively. The concept of performance applied to those models directly transferred to the 595 50th Anniversario to create one of the fastest Abarths in history, if you don't count the 695 by Posto to be featured on my channel in the near future. The initial detail that stands out is that this 595 is the first Abarth product since the brand's revitalization to wear the Fiat name. Just as the original, this limited edition was first released to the public September 15, 2013, exactly 50 years of the original 595's public debut. Limited to just 299 units, with only 50 being made in right-hand drive, it serves as a tribute, paying homage to an icon that put Abarth on the map, setting records in performance and racing. It differentiates itself from the standard cars with handmade graphics, emblems, and medallions, not to mention a hefty dose of performance while the body is coated in a specifically developed three-layer matte white finish for an end goal to reinterpret the original 595's color themes and graphics. The signature Abarth logos are replaced with retro Abarth and C badges inside and out, while the side graphics read Fiat Abarth 595. The name is also highlighted by a handmade offset brushed aluminum emblem on the driver's side of the rear hatch. Also standard are Xenon projector headlamps up front with dipped and driving light functions that help improve visibility substantially over the regular halogens. The rest of the body styling is pretty much your typical Abarth, with plenty of little air intakes, scoops, and scallops, contrasting gray fascia inserts, and large intakes up in the front clip, while the rear features a more robust rear diffuser with an upgraded quad-piped dual-mode variable back pressure record Monza exhaust allowing a higher level of the Abarth's amazing exhaust note above 3000 RPM. I'll have a full battery of sound clips and more coming in just a second when we take it down the runway. The 50th Anniversario comes with its own set of 17 by 7 inch alloy wheels finished in 695 magnesio gray with red outer liner and red brake calipers. 
They're wrapped in higher rated Michelin tires measuring 20540 at each corner. Stopping power is provided by higher performing cross-drilled floating Brembo discs measuring 305 millimeters or 12 inches in front clamped by four piston calipers while the rear is brought up by 240 millimeter or 9.4 inch discs with single piston calipers. As far as the suspension, it features an independent McPherson strut up front and semi-independent twist beam rear axle. The rest of the suspension is by Coney, which promises increases in handling with frequency selecting damping and lowered eyebox springs. The original 595 of 1963 was powered by a 595cc engine with a whopping 27 horsepower. While the latest 595 50th Anniversario begins with the core 1.4 liter turbocharged T-Jet 4 cylinder found in the rest of the lineup, but receives a larger Garrett turbocharger for a max horsepower output of 180 at 5500 RPM which is 20 more than the other 595 variants. That's an impressive 128 horsepower per liter. Torque is up to 184 pound feet when activated sport mode. 0 to 62 miles an hour is achieved in about 6.9 seconds with a top speed around 140 miles an hour. While Ubarth customization options seem endless, the 595 50th Anniversario features a custom tailored interior covered in premium materials and unique accents. For the most part, the interior styling is identical to a 595 Turismo. It's also similar to the US spec with subtle differences. The main one being the storage trays underneath the dash where we have a glove box. I thought the tray was really quite cool and convenient for quick placement of items and easy access. Red, as you can see, is the key theme found throughout, with padded portions across the doors that provide a nice soft place to rest your arm. These leather clad red and white bucket seats are really quite comfortable and definitely a whole lot more comfortable than the 595 Competizione seats. They provide a nice amount of support, not a whole lot of lateral grip but there's plenty of padding in all of the right places to have a nice balance between sport and comfort. They are fully manual with manual height adjustment for the driver's seat as well as striped accenting coming across the middle, side curtain airbags as well as 595 logo stitched into each fixed headrest. There's also plenty of other unique attributes found throughout, including the Fiat Abarth 595 aluminum door sill entry guards, as well as the unique floor mats with a combination of either, I believe, leather or vinyl material and carpet, wrapped in a red piping with these unique Abarth logoed aluminum locking pins. The aluminum sport pedals are adorned with the original Scorpion logo, you have a standard driver knee airbag, as well as a manually adjusting steering wheel. You'll also notice in this particular variant that the center portion of the dash is not color keyed to the vehicle, and is finished in a matte red. To the left you have another little storage pocket, turbo boost gauge to the left of the speedometer cluster which is padded with red color accent stitching as well as a standard glass sliding sunroof to help mimic the styling of the original model. And as with any special edition, the 50th Anniversario also features a signature number plaque in the bottom of the center console. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. So let's do an acceleration test now down the runway, 0 to 180 kilometers an hour which is approximately 110 miles an hour. I also strapped my GoPro camera to the rear bumper so you can hear the sweet sounds of that record Monza exhaust.
brakes felt pretty good overall. I didn't do any like hard stopping or anything like that, but in normal driving and driving from higher speeds in the track, they definitely delivered a nice, consistent feel. Down below in the center console, you have a little storage cubby that you can pop out by just pulling on it. Like I said earlier, the US spec cars have a glove box, but these particular models in the European market actually have storage trays under the dash, which is pretty cool. Down below, in this particular model, you also have aluminum race-inspired kick plates down below. The passenger seat also features similar adjustments that you find in the driver's seat except that it doesn't have the manual height adjustment. Two cup holders down below, a power outlet, as well as USB integration. Automatic windows and an electronic climate control system is also standard as are front and rear fog lamps and a premium audio system that's MP3 compatible and a single disc and dash CD player. One benefit of having the hatchback over the cabrio is the increased storage space. With the rear seats up you have 9.5 cubic feet, but maximum cargo capacity with everything folded down is 30.2 cubic feet and as you can see can fit two large suitcases and a bunch of camera equipment as you travel across Europe. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth review and road test of the Fiat Abarth 595. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.